Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Don't you know it's a privilege for you to be here this morning? Amen. That my soul may be blessed in accordance to what God's word says. It doesn't make sense to go to church and get nothing better but only worse. You know, the Bible tells us of a woman that had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And she didn't spend all of her money going from one doctor to the next and the Bible says she got nothing better but only worse. And so if you would just take and apply that to going to church today, they're not getting better, but only worse. I want to call your attention to a passage of Scripture in the book of First Peter, the third chapter, and I want to begin reading. <clears throat> Let me begin at verse number eight. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one for another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are therefore called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For because he that will love life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil. And his lips that they might, that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For because the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he? That will harm you if you be followers of that which is good. But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. In the book of Second Timothy, the third chapter, I mean Second Peter, the third chapter. And let me begin reading at verse number one, the second epistle, beloved. I now write unto you, in both I, which I stir up your pure mind by the way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments to us of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers and walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For because since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and of the earth, standing out of the water in water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perditions 
of ungodly men, you may be seated. You know, for the most part, Somewhere in our lives or at one time or another, we have heard the old cliche that what you don't know won't hurt you. But I got news for you. What you don't know will kill you. What you don't know will destroy you. And so we're living in a day and time that people are attending church and they are willfully ignorant of what God's word says. For the most part, they know that preachers for the most in this day and time are not living in accordance with what God's word says. All that they're doing is making excuses for people's sin. But that would be okay if that wasn't going to be a judgment. You know, people doesn't mind working on a job where there's no, no accountability. If you can just show up to work whenever you get ready, you know, whatever day of the week you decide to come or whatever time you decide of that day you're going to get up and go to work. At, you know, and nobody says anything. You can wear what you want to wear. You, you, you know, you can come in drunk as a skunk. You can come in high as a kite. You can just come in messed up. And nobody saying anything. And the reason being because there's no accountability factor built in. But when you know that you're on a job, and I, I don't know no job that doesn't have accountability built in. It's not factored in. And so if we find ourselves in a place where there's no accountability, anybody in their right mind say, I, I, I don't want to be a part of that. You know, in the old West, you, they had that time of lawlessness, you know, that folk just walk around there and just shoot folk. You know, they had one, they were saying the man just walk up and shout a man for snowing. Just shout him. You know, there, there, are, there are no accountability. Just, and there's no repercussions because of your behavior. But unfortunately, people are going to churches today that where there's no accountability. There's nobody to hold them accountable. That nobody's going to say nothing about their lifestyle. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, that's not God's church. Even in the beginning of time, Adam and Eve, even though they were in the garden, they had restrictions. Now, they, they had, they can do a, a whole lot of things in the garden. But you see that tree over there? Don't touch that tree. All these other trees, you can eat that all, but that tree right there is off limits. But you know, anytime you tell a something not to do, then it, it is in, we're intrigued about, I wonder why he told us that. And so now we find ourselves, we look at it, we think about it and we think about it. Let me help us to understand. Look at our children. Look at the little kids. You can go and, you know, we, we have to have the, the heaters in the house. And that child looking at that heater, looking at the flames, the amber color, that, that he's intrigued by that. The parent look at him and say, don't you touch that. You're going to get burned. It's going to hurt. And he'll turn around and walk away. And just as soon as she turned her back.
Next thing she knows you. Ah! I told him not to touch that heat. He did what she told him not to do. And some of us have experienced that. They told us not to do it, but we did it anyway. And we found out it really burned. And it really hurt. So now, because there are boundaries, in the real church, having a relationship with God is centered around boundaries. That you cannot go beyond these boundaries. God's words tells us, don't you go beyond these boundaries. So God told Adam, he told Eve, and said, hey, first Adam, all of these trees, you can eat all, but except that tree over there. Now his wife come along, and believe you me, Adam told Eve what God said. So why did you say that? Because Eve stood up and told the devil what God said. And Eve was not there when God told Adam that. So nevertheless, we find them, Eve, in a conversation with the devil. The devil tells her, say, I know what God told you all. But God lied to you all. I want to tell you, I heard him when he told you that the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. You're not going to die. You are not going to die. Not physically. No, no, there, there was no definite clarity on what you're going to die for. He wasn't saying that you're going to die physically. But the worst kind of death is that spiritual death. So why is that so hurting and so, it, 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 it's the worst kind because that death separates you from God. And so the day that they sinned, they died. They became separated from God. And so now, you know, the, let me back up just a little bit. The devil said, no, you, the day that you eat of that fruit, the day, you shall not surely die, but your eyes going to become open and you're going to become as God. Knowing good and evil. Now, you got their attention. You got Eve's attention. Even though she stood up and said, God, he told us that we can eat of every tree in the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The devil didn't even dispute it in auger. He went on to something else. But when he left out of the presence, that intrigue was in Eve's heart. Hmm. Maybe God really didn't want us to eat that because our eyes are going to become open and we're going to become as God's little G. And so now, there they go. They step outside the boundaries. They go into that restricted area that God had forbidden them to go. And now, God come looking for them. Adam, Adam, where are thou? On numerous occasions, they had met Adam and God in the cool of the day. But this particular day, Adam decided, I'm not going to show up. I'm going to be a no-show. But God kept calling, Adam, Adam, where are thou? And finally, Adam said, hey, I'm hiding. God said, Adam, why are you hiding? Adam said, I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. But he didn't want to take responsibility for his actions, so he said, you know, God, that woman you gave me, that woman that you gave me, she gave me of that fruit, and I did it. So now, they become eternally separated from God. Now watch this. 
See, in churches today, you can wear anything that you want to wear. Just like Adam and Eve, you see, when they're in that pure state, they can walk around naked and, you know, they kept sexuality was pure. And so when sin entered in, somewhere there's some shame came in. And so now they're trying to use fig leaves to cover up their stuff, their private part. You know, the fig leaves, that's, that's a pretty big leaf. But God said that's not enough. And so what some of these folks are wearing in the church is not enough. So God said, listen, uh, he, God killed animals and, and, and put the skins on it. He covered them, their self up. And, and so people like going to church with all of their stuff hanging out. They like to go to church with, you know, everything is revealed. There's nothing left to the imagination. But a, a daughter of Sarah, she covers herself up. She covers herself up. A woman that, that have, you know, some respect about themselves, they cover themselves up. Because they don't, first they don't understand that, you know, sex was made beautiful. It, it, it wasn't something that you just go out and experiment with. You only, God designed, sex is between a married man and a married woman. It's not to be designed to just go out and single and mingle. No, 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 no. That's an individual that have no respect for themselves. Man or woman, don't care who it is. Because when you respect yourself, you, you, you keep yourself for that right one. And that right one is the one whose name is on that piece of paper. It's not somebody you can go out and hit it and quit it. Just a one night stand, but this this is until death do us fall. But now we're living in a day and time that, you know, free love. You know, a lot of this stuff came out, you, you know, with the hippie generation. Yeah, that peace. Peace, brother. You know, that old baby boomer generation, and that's what we are, this is why our society is messed up now because that baby a boomer generation is, is in charge now. And they, in that day and time, they didn't have any values, and they surely don't have any now. That's, that's why a man can accept for his son being a punk. You, that you know that's messed up. And that, that woman, you know, for the most part, Women have, they can't see their son taking their role. Acting out in, in my role. That's, that's messed up. And so now, we come back into this time of ignorance. What you don't know will hurt you. It'll kill you. Tell Tom where you get that from. Well, I looked at Hosea 4 and 6. And he said that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, for ignorance. Ignorance is the lack of knowledge. Ignorance is not knowing. And so when you come into the knowledge of the truth, See, when you come here, I'm a disseminator of truth. And I'm not going to come up here. I'm not going to dance. I'm not going to get flashy. Because I want you to get the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, preachers want you to look at them and talk about them and their hand gestures and all of the jive and all of this foolishness. But I want you to see Jesus Christ. I want you to see my life that hid behind the cross that, that Jesus hung on. My God, that brought about profound change in my life. And so Jesus didn't die for us to do whatever we desire to do. Even though he left it up to us, you can live like you want to live. It's up to you. I'm not going to make you live a holy life. I'm not going to make you do what's pleasing and acceptable in my sight. That's a choice. When Moses stood before the children of Israel, and he said, I set before you this day 
life and good and death and evil. It's your choice. You know, seem like anybody in their right mind would choose life and good. Oh, no, not so. When we look at our, forget about what the world look like. Let, let's talk about the church. Because people are gravitating to churches and, 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 and you know, the preachers that they done made icons out of, which they themselves are nothing but cons. I don't care if you don't ever like it. You know, somebody like T.D. Jake because that devil would run around and tell him, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. And, and, and I tell anybody, according to the scripture, everybody that's getting ready, get ready, get ready when Jesus comes going to hell. According to Matthew 25, the Bible gives us a, in, in verses 1 through 10, it tells us about 10 virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. The Bible said the wise took extra oil in their lamp. They, they made preparation. But the foolish didn't take extra oil. They just said, I, I hope I make it. But it, while they slept, while the bridegroom tarried, they slept. But the Bible said at midnight, a cry was made. and said, behold, the bridegroom coming. And the Bible said, they that was ready. They that was ready. Got up and went out to meet him. Now those that were getting ready got up and wasn't ready. See, when, if you're getting ready, you're not ready. You know, a mother was, was, telling, she was telling about her husband. Her husband, would, you know, he, he told her, said, listen, we're getting ready. We're going over here. She said, I want to go. He said, I tell you what, I got to run over here. When I come back, be ready. When the husband came back, she came to the door and stuck her finger out there, you know, just one minute. He bagged out the drive and took off. Now she's sad. She mad because why did you drive off and leave? I told you to be ready when I came back. I told you to be ready when I came back. And God is saying, you better be ready when I come back. Because I don't want you getting ready. I got you got to be ready. The Bible said concerning the church, the bride has made herself ready. The bride is not getting ready. The bride is already ready. Can I get a witness up in here? And when I look at you, I want to ask you, how many of you ready to go back with Jesus Christ when it comes? Uh, come on and talk back to me. And if you're going to be ready, it means that I have presented my body unto God as a living sacrifice. That the life that I live it's pleasing and acceptable unto God. And let me tell you something. You don't want God to come. And catch you with your work undone. You know somebody said. My Lord delayed his coming. And he went back and began to eat and to drink with the drunkard. But in such an hour that he thought not. The son of man came. He called him unprepared. He called him not ready. And he appointed him in his portion with the hypocrites and sinner. I go, you don't want to die and come before God unprepared. <laughs> Going to church does not make you ready for heaven. What makes you ready for heaven is that you have presented your body unto God as a living sacrifice. That said, Mr. Thomas, why do I have to present my body unto God? Because God wants you to present your body unto him. And see, so God want to sanctify that body. He want to set that body apart for his service and for his youth. Why would God want to do that? So he can walk in you. So he can talk in you. Oh God, that men and women, boys and girls that sit in darkness can see your great light. They can see where God done brought you from. They can see how God done washed you up. They can see how God done cleansed you up. Can I get a witness up in here? And listen, I don't care how you done messed up. My God, God can clean you up. You got to have a mind to turn off of Broadway and get on Straight Street. I just want to do what's right. I just want to do what's pleasing and acceptable in the outside of God. See, people in their own minds have made mistakes. And then they punish themselves and saying, you know, God is not going to forgive me. That's not your call. 
All you got to do is ask for forgiveness. And God will forgive you. The Bible said he that cometh to God, he in no wise will cast out. If you got a mind to change, if you got a mind, my God, to change direction, you don't like the way, in, in, the way your lifestyle is going, you know you got to change. You got to do what it takes, my God, to get it right. And then the only way you're going to get it right is not just by going to church, but by receiving Jesus Christ, my God, into your life. Because Jesus Christ want to be the only king that sits up on the throne of your heart. When I look at Matthew 6 and 24, the Bible tells me that no man can serve two masters. He's going to love one either and hate the other, cleave to one and despise the other. But you can't serve God and the devil. You can't serve God. Our God and would walk like the world, talk like the world, act like the world, look like the world. Anything that walk like a duck, look like a duck, quack like a duck, guess what? It's a duck. You're not a Christian because you go to church. You're not a Christian because you walk around with religious religious paraphernalia on. Come on and talk back to me. People think that I got doves in my ears and even my breast is showing. And I put a, a, a dove in there. That, that, that's not sanctified. Because see, when that, when that breast gets sanctified, it's going to be covered up. You're going to cover the sisters up. Come on, talk to me. This ain't no play where you can let it all hang out. No, no, you got to cover it up. Come on and talk back to me. I got, we need women. We need mothers in this hour that are real mothers. You know, you, you, you got three generations of folks out on the dance floor. You got three generations, my God, a family member sitting up passing the joint. Come on, talk back to me. Now, who going to tell who what? When the granddaughter get up and slap grandma. Come on, talk to me. When you're sitting up in the club and, and granddaughter and got drunk and become belligerent, all beside us, them jump up and go upside grandmama head. I'm your grandmama. Which y'all say, grandmama, if you're a grandmama, you ought to act like one. Come on and talk to me. Well, we need mothers that's going to be mothers. That's going to be an example to their children. We need fathers that's going to be fathers to their children. Come on and talk back to me. No, no, you, you got a problem. When you're talking about, the, they say, mama, you do it. Yeah, but I'm grown. You still going to hell. You still going to hell. That doesn't mean, that does not Make it okay for you to do what you're doing because you're grown. Because if you come to God, you got to humble yourself and become as a little child. Yo, that spirit of being grown has to change because you want to be an example. My God, before your daughter, you want to be an example before your son. Bless him up in here, somebody. And this is what's wrong. Now, God, we got all these new babysitters. Babysitters, all of these, these new babysitters that we got. The games, television, because mama don't want to be mama. Mama said, no, saw herself up texting. She didn't learn how to text a little bit, so she go in there and turn, she, she go turns on, on the computer. She go turns on the television and let them look at all these old vulgar cartoons. Come on, talk to me. We need moms that are going to stand up and be moms. Moms that are going to be an example to their daughter. They can't, mom can't walk around with all of her, her black eyes showing. Walking around there with, with halters on. Halters are for cows. If you're not a helper, what you walking around there with a halt on? I don't care if you don't ever like it. You're just shaking everything, flopping. You got to have everything controlled. That's why you, you know women don't. They don't like the wearing, wearing girls. You know, they, they like to the, 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 the walk around there like two pigs in a tote sack. Just shake it. It, it got to be jelly because jam don't shake like Oh, glory to God. You cover yourself up. Why do you do it? Because I respect myself. That's what Aretha said. Respect yourself. But the women didn't take heed to Aretha. They want to let it all hang out. 
They want to let it all hang out, not just in the world. They want to let it all hang out in the church. The, the so-called first lady, she letting it all hang out. And don't you know you got these nasty women in the pool, but I ain't going to preach on y'all today, but, but I'm going to show you how nasty you are. First of all, you got that old short dress on, and then you with your nasty self up there kicking your leg up like you anoint. That's not decent and it's not in order. You going to hell. Ignorance. My people. He wasn't saying the Jebusites. He wasn't saying the Canaanites, the Hittites, or the Kenites. He said my people. He was talking about the Jews, God's chosen people. They are destroyed before because they don't know. They don't know what my word said. And we got people now in this day and time, you don't even have to, the, the, the church does not even require you to bring a Bible. You just come. Because I, I don't want nobody here coming in using the iPhone and, and, and all that other technology because I'm not into that. Now, what I want you, you can use it out, son. But when you come up in here, you bring your Bible. So you can. I like to see you looking down, turning the pages. I like that. I like that. I don't want you. I don't want that foolishness. Well, so I'm old time. You know, years ago we, we had it, we had that commercial you're talking about Smith Barney. We do things the old fashioned way. We earn it. And see now the people they are not learning nothing because they, they relying upon the, the smartphone and the iPhone. Can can I just teach it? I'm gonna move on. All that smartphone does is make you dumb. Because you're relying on it for everything. What should I eat for breakfast? It's not, it's okay for you to have things. But when things have you, when you become more dependent upon the iPhone and the smartphone than you do for God, you got a problem. Preachers can't say they come up here with all these old handwritten notes and, and stuff they done got on the iPad. You going to hell. Because all it does, you are not leaning on the leaders and the guidance of the Holy Ghost. You relying upon technology. I'd be so glad when they go out, when the screen turned black. None. Because you ain't got time to just sit around there trying to figure out it and to try to get it back on. The, uh, now these folks not going to sit there and wait for you to try and go back and try to find out what messed up. No, no. You, you got to have something in your heart. Because it's not in that self same hour. It won't be you that speak about the Holy Ghost that speak through you. And so you are not relying upon the anointing of God. You're relying upon technology. Let, let, let me just teach. I'm going to preach in a little bit. When we look at our society, we, we, we're just taking, we won't stay with what God's word says. We're following technology. Now, where in the Bible do you come up with drive through prayer? They, they got drive through prayer. You, now, you, you, how in the world, you, the, those are people that don't have, they are not connected to God. And so you can get a drive through prayer. I know I can go through uh, McDonald's. I can go to Burger King, Wendy's. I can go, I go to KFC. I, I can go to churches. I can go to Popeye drive through. Because people don't want to go in. <laughs> they, they, they don't want to go into the church. But you, I wouldn't go through go in that church either. Because you, you shouldn't go through the drive through You shouldn't go in it either. You, you should keep going. You should keep going. But you need somewhere where the word of God is being preached and being taught. You need something that's, that, that's going to show you you. You need something that's going to step on your toes. Come on, talk to me. You need something. My God, because, you, you know, years ago we had the, the commercial. I'm, I'm trying to think. I, what is it? Brute? Like that. Yeah. And then you spank it. You rub a little on the hand. And then, Thanks, I needed that. And see, somebody, you need to go into a church where it's going Wake you up. 
and say, I needed that because I thought I was all right, but I came to that church and I found out I was hell bound. I was riding there following after Rem Doolittle, Bishop Doolittle, Apostle Doolittle, Dr. Doolittle, all of the Doolittle that won't tell the truth. And so now I found somebody that's going to tell it. I found somebody that loved me enough to tell me the truth. When I look at Revelation 3 and 18, he said, For as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. I, I'm doing it because I love you. The word is finding you because I love you. Because I don't want to come and remove your candlestick. I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to go to heaven. So I got to reprove what's messed up in your life. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. People are willfully ignorant of what God's word. That's why they say, hey, that's why I don't like that preacher. Because he's talking about me. The preacher ain't talking about you. The preacher is preaching the word. That's that other one. That's a, You need somebody that's going to talk about you. You need somebody that's going to show you, you, where you stand in, in relationship to God. Do, do, do I have a relationship with God or do I not have a relationship with God? I go to church. I, I pay tithes. That, that doesn't mean anything. The devil goes to church. But it's time for a change. We, we're living in a day and time. That, you know, people want a fabulous wedding. And then the wedding took months to plan. Or years in planning. And then the marriage lasts a couple of months. The marriage doesn't last as long as they're planning for the wedding. Why that, Elder Thomas? Because they were planning for the wrong thing. They, they trying to impress people. But if you're going to plan for marriage, my God, you got to get somewhere where it's it going to help me to, to get in a place for marriage. Come on and talk to me. I got something that's going to show me and say, as a man, this is my responsibility. As a woman, this is your responsibility in the marriage. You have to keep everything in perspective. Sex is not at the top of the list. I, 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 we have great sex together. I don't think Tiger Woods was out there with them women because he wasn't having great sex. He had a wife at home. He was just a whole mother. I'm going to make that clear. And so now we need somebody that's going to show us, uh, you know, can, can you give my stuff over there? Let, let me help you to understand. Give, give my stuff over there. He, he, come on. Yeah, hey, you, 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 you're going to learn the rope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're going to learn the ropes. And see, people, they don't really dislike me. They don't really dislike what I'm saying. It's a little dusty, but you can still see. I'm going to ask that question I always ask. What is this? That's all a mirror is. It's a judge. It tells us what's out of line. It tells us, hey, look, you need to get yourself together. That I don't believe that one of us, maybe the kids didn't, but for the most part, we came out of here, we, we want to be dressed to kill. So in order to get to that point, we got to look in here. You, you can't put that hat on your head just in any kind of way. You got to look at the mirror, see which way it all, I got to tilt it. To, to make sure that, the, you know, it don't look right just squish down on your head. So you, you got to, you know, have a little pizzazz with it. And so that mirror said, then you walk out that mirror and say, you, you go, girl. Come on, talk to me. You look in the mirror to see you don't want the tie way over here. So, man, I got that nice suit on, nice shirt. I got that tie got to be right. If I got it right. It's got to be right. I got to make sure that knot is right. Because I want to look good. Anybody got a problem with that? If you got a problem with it, take the mirrors out your house. Come on, talk to me. If you have a problem with this, take the mirror out of your house. And so God's word is the same as this. It's a mirror. You look into this thing, this, this gets you ready to go out to meet the public. But God's mirror gets you ready to meet him. Come on and talk to me. See, you can, you can dress to, be dressed to kill or go out and meet the public. And somebody said, girl, you, you, are you sharp today? 
They look at you, man, and say, man, you know you sharp. That's the sharp suit that you got on. And then the, the next time you know when you stand before God, that, that suit look good, but you messed up. Your life does not please me. And so we got to make sure that the life that I'm living is a life that's going to bring glory to God. And so when I look at this word, I, I got to find out what it's going to take for me to make heaven my home. I don't know, I don't know about you. Every day could be my last day. Every day could be my last. So with that mindset, I stay prepared. And you have to stay prepared, stay ready, so you won't have to get ready with quitting time. You can't get ready when it is on your deathbed. Deathbed confession is out. Say, oh, Tom, what about the thief on the cross? That was on a whole different dispensation. But now we are under grace and truth. That the Bible said God once winked at ignorance. But now he commands men everywhere to repent. You got to repent of your sins. You got to change. Your life style cannot stay the same. So, El Tom, so what, what are you saying? Now, when we stand before God, the Bible said, when we stand before God, that our works do follow us. Now, because you can't, where your works at? On a deathbed confession. I asked the Lord to forgive me. But you didn't have, you spent all of your time in the club. Your grandma and spent all of her time. Sweet Garrett and Bitter Garrett. Heaven not going to have no spit tunes up there. Grandpa walk around now spitting bull of the woods and, and all of that stuff. Days work to back. Now they, they got Kodiak and they got Copenhagen. You going to hell. You got to walk right. You got to spit white. You can't walk around with your teeth brown as wood. Bless him up in here, somebody. In a time of ignorance. Give me Romans 10. Begin to read the first three verses for me. But while you're doing that, I, I want to say this. We cannot afford to be ignorant. Read. Brethren. Holy, he wasn't talking about the Jebusites again. He wasn't talking about the Gen Gentiles again. He said for Israel, his chosen people, what do you want, God? I want to see them saved. Come on. Holy, because, for, because he stated the reason. The reason I want, want to see them saved because I bear them record. I'm a witness. Come on. They have a zeal of God. Uh-oh, they're not doing it in accordance to the knowledge of what God's word said. They got a zeal. They are doing things, but it's not in accordance to the knowledge. Come on. Hold it. Because they are ignorant of God's righteousness. And we have a church world of Ill illiterate people because they don't know what God's word said. They're going to all, all of these, these churches and, and they're not getting the word that's going to cause their lives to be transformed. Jesus came that we might not perish but have everlasting life. I got, when you look at Joel saying you must be born again because he got to start with him and, and, and whatever, Vicky. They, they got to get right first. And all of these Cons that y'all have made our cons out of. They won't tell you the truth. But the real man of God is going to stand up and proclaim the whole counsel of God. The, the real man of God is not ducking and dodging. My God, political issues. I got the thing that, that, that's prevalent in our society. The things that talk about political correctness. No, no. God, what I'm talking about what's biblical correct. If you are a man of God, you're going to say what's biblical correct. Don't worry about that foolishness. Now, God, I don't want to offend nobody. The word of God is going to offend somebody. When I heard the, the Larry King asked Joel and Victoria, he asked us, what, what is about homosexuality? I don't deal with politically. That offended me. 
Because I know that devil, he's not of God. When he asked T.D. Jakes, said, what about the homosexuality? What does the Bible say? No, fool, you tell it. Because the folk, they don't want you to say fool. Let me tell, let me, let me explain you something. Listen, the Bible said, thou fool, this night, thou, he's saying, you fool. You going to hell tonight. Come on, talk to me. Don't get mixed up and talk about, don't get Rachel mixed up with the other word. Because when it comes down to, to teaching God's word, if you say foolish, it, now God, fool is the root word. And so we got to look at this thing. If I go to the Old Testament, the Bible said my people have become sadists. They have become stupid. That's what sadists is. They have become stupid. And, and people that they, they want a kind and gentler word. No, no, I can't deal with that. I'm going to tell it just like it is. I'm going to call it just like it is. Just like it is. They told, you know, they was telling about D.L. Moody was in, 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 in a revival. And at the end of a service, a woman came up to him and said, listen, could you pray for me? So, uh, I'm, I'm, a, what, what's, I'm an exaggerator. That's it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an exaggerator. He said, sure, I'll pray for you. Lay the hands on and say, Lord, save this liar. She stopped and said, Holy, no, I'm not a liar. I'm an exaggerator. He said, I just call it what it is. And, and so that's what you do with sin. You just call it what it is. My God, you got people that are mixed up and messed up. My God, nobody, no sane person. No sane person would refuse to go to heaven when it has been presented unto them. But you, let me tell you something. You got a lot of preachers and deceivers out there that's telling you, say, hey, salvation is free. You got to understand something. Salvation has never been free. Salvation has never been free. No, no, it's free. Okay. Let's talk about the probably most popular scripture in the Bible. That God so loved the world. That he saved it. No. God so loved the world that he did what? Gave. So it cost him something. He gave. He gave. He gave. He did what? He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now let's look at this. Now the son loved us so much that he gave his life. Without the shedding of blood. There is no remission of sin. Now, where is salvation free yet? Now, he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, you got to present your body unto God. I can't just go to heaven. I got to present my body to God. Why do I have to present my body to God? So now, God is in charge of my body. I relinquish all rights of myself unto God. So now I can't do what I want to do. I got to live like God said. Oh, they act like that. That's, that's pretty deep. Okay. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. When you go down there to the county jail. <laughs> when you go down there to the county jail. You don't go when you get ready. You don't come when you get ready. You can't come out of the cell when you get ready. Come on, talk to me. Because they're in control of your life. They tell you when to wake up. You can't stay up all time of night watching television. They tell you when the lights go out. They say, I don't like the clothes that you got on, so I want you to put on this orange jumpsuit. You mean to tell me I can't wear my Nike? You got to wear that orange jumpsuit. You can't walk around now with under all, arm all, arm, what is that, under all? So you can't wear all of that stuff. You can't walk around now with a J.J. Watt jersey on. You can't walk around now with a Michael Jordan jersey on or over that orange jumpsuit because they control your life. Don't care if you don't ever like You're going to look like everybody else that don't have right to their life. 
Now you can't go in there through that line. You can't do that, that, you know, what they done cooked up in there. You can't do like you do at Luby's and all these other. Uh, you can't do like you do at, at Ryan's and, and the, uh, the other places. My God, where they got the buffet. You can go there and pick. They, you ain't got to worry about no menu. They already picked it out for you. All you got to do is just get your tray and slide. And so that letting you know, you, you can tell them you don't want that or not because if you don't, they're going to slap it on there. So you, you, y'all, y'all don't have any pancake? Do you see any pancake? So you don't come in here and order your, your, your pancake. I want a three stack. I want a four stack. You're going to get whatever they put on that plate. You know why? Because they controlled your life. Now when you get through at the county jail, they tell you, say, hey, catch the train. Get on this train. You got to go. You got to move around. Your stay here is over. Now you're going to your permanent residence. The jail is just temporary. Just like hell. It's just temporary. Am I making sense? <laughs> the jail is just temporary. Are you getting ready when you stand before the judge, they're going to sentence you to go to TDC and serve your time. So now, when you stand before God, God going to tell you he's going to sentence you to everlasting life or eternal damnation where you're going to spend the rest of your life. And for those that are in hell, he said the smoke of their torment shall descend up forever and ever. What I should say, in the lake of fire. Because death and hell shall be cast into the lake of fire. In other words, body and soul. Because hell just holds the soul. The grave holds the body. But body and soul are going to be destroyed in the lake of fire. So this is why God is saying, what you don't know will kill you. And so you, if you think that Reverend Doolittle, and my God, because he's popular, he won't tell you the truth. No, no, you run around now with Pee Wee that will run around there playing with his Wee Wee. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't no laughing matter, did you know? You, you're cheering that like, like little Pee Wee. He run around there, you know, you know like he's he not that, but he's he playing with his Wee Wee. And you want your children walk around that, you know, looking at this junk. These perverse, these free. So we need to have a, a, a good look at our lives and begin to examine our lives and make sure that it's lined up. With what God's word said. Because let me tell you something. Sin is not worth it. Sin is not worth it. When you, 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 you look at the brother, say, I'm an old man. Man, you know, that's what we men do. They, you know, they lay with women. That's what men do. You, you, you messed up, brother. Your mind is twisted. Your mind is warped. Because you, you, you act like it, you, you know it's all that. But let me tell you something. Brother, you, you ain't got nothing on, on this man. He, he, he's the epitome of what sexuality is all about. Solomon said, I had 300 wives and 700 concubines. And he said, I, and even that was vanity and vexation of the spirit. Come on and talk to me. But you, you act like, man, hey, man I'm, I'm the man. If you were the real man. You're not, not the dog man. I'm talking about the real man. Because, see, you out there, you, you the one that, that's walking around there, you, you strutting your stuff and you think you all of that, but a real man not going to play in your tutu, women. But everybody doing it. You're alive. Everybody's not doing it. And you think you hot to try, you're going to walk around there, you're going to wind up like Magic Johnson with something you can't shake. And how many others then wind up with something that they can't shake? Because somebody out there just stepping around, playing around, and you like it. You, you like that. That's why you're going to the club. You ain't going, ain't no good girls up in the club. Ain't no good girls up in the club. Cause what, why are you going out to the club for? Wild aisle on the prowl. Somebody hit on you because you ain't going to dress right. You want all of your stuff hanging out. You, you, you got a, a, a dress on that ain't enough material to sit down on. 
All of your stuff is out. All of, don't leave nothing to the imagination. All your, your breast is out. It's low cut. And some of you are really nasty. You won't even wear a bra with your nasty set. That other helper don't wear them either. <laughs> she don't have a bra on either. I don't care if y'all, I'm talking about the four leg one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she she let, let it hang out, man. They just flapping all over the place. No, it, no condemnation. They just flapping out. And then the other two legged, they walk around and just flapping. Because they don't have no respect for themselves. And the preacher's not going to say that because he's a peeping tongue. I, 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 I. I couldn't see nothing on that, right? Nothing on that. Side. Bunch of nasty devils. Listen. There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes. Yet they are not washed from their filthiness. Ignorance. Ignorance. And you think that the God going to let you into heaven? Sister gal, first lady, whatever you call yourself, with all of your stuff out. And But let me, let me hear this. I, I don't understand that. I don't understand. Why are all these women sitting up in the pool pit? Why are all these women, the pastor, his wife, and, and the mama, the daughter, the, you know, everybody sitting up in the pool pit with those short skirts on? You, you, you know, and then they got to put that little country cross on there. That's the reason you don't have no business up there. Because if you were dressed right, you wouldn't have to be putting that cloth on. See, don't, don't add that piece on it. You need to add the other piece before we get there. With your nasty self. It's time to get back to the word of God. It's time to fall in love. Don't tell me you love God and you don't love his word. Because when you love God, in order to love God, you got to love his word. That he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. And everybody that don't love God's word, everybody that's offended at God's word, my God, you going to hell. God going to destroy you because you have not a love for the truth. And so the, the truth of God's word is coming to show us ourselves. It's coming to reveal unto us God's will and God's purpose for our individual life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you women something. Don't walk around there exposing yourself. Don't go around there exhibiting yourself. Because the, you, you know you're walking around there like a piece of meat on a hook. And, and you got Fido out there. And he, he, you know, he, he liked the meat. And you, you attract all kind of dogs. Let a meat truck drive through there dragging a piece of meat. Man, next time you know you got a whole pack of dogs lined up, mangy one. See, flea infested dogs. And so when you you out there and, and you out there exhibiting your body like that, you're going to draw all kind of nasty devil. All kind of lust town. And our problem today, we don't have any integrity in the pulpit. This is why every time you look up, you got a preacher in scandal with some young girl. Come on, talk to me. Because there are no integrity in the pulpit. Let me talk about one of the local preachers. I'm not going to call his name. He about used to just ticks on a whole pack of manger dogs. But, but a, a young man and this young lady, this girl, that they, they were supposed they're going to get married. They were having some problems. So he went to talk to their pastor. So the pastor talked to him. Then he talked to the woman. Next thing he know, he wound up marrying the young girl. It didn't last long. You know, don't you know that's sorry? That is really sorry. 
And see, the thing about it is, see, I got too much at stake here. And so when I talk with one, if I have to get behind closed doors, but the door for the most part is going to be open, and somebody's going to be there, because I got too much at stake. Because they can say anything. But, I, hey, I got too much at stake. They, you know, they, they, they don't have to rape nobody. All they got to do is just say, he raped me. And the next time you know, I'm going to jail. For what? She said, you raped her. But, you know, they're telling a lot. I'm innocent until proven guilty. Well, while I'm going to jail, I haven't been proven guilty. Somebody telling a lie. No, no, if, if I'm innocent, why are you here? Why am I here? Now, I want to know why you here come to pick me up. Because you're going by hearsay. But I suppose. Innocent until proven guilty. No, no, so they changed it. Talking about the presumption of innocence. So if any of you want, sister, y'all want to talk to me, and when I got somebody standing, I, I, I leave the door open. And so somebody going to be out there so that they can see. Now, I don't want you to hear everything going on, being said. But you're going to be in the earshot because if they get out of order, I'm going to say, come on, you, you dismiss. We, we, you, we, we won't be talking. And they look at me and say, well, what? One or other, they will find why come out. Well, I'm going to come out and tell them, we, we have to end this meeting because they got out of order. They got out of line with the bishop. But I, I ain't trying. I, I got my own stuff to work with. Uh, you you going to come talk to me about your sex problem. Now, I, I talk to the brother, but I ain't talking to no sister about the no sex problem. So if, what is this concern? But this is why I tell them, say, you want to talk to me, call Sister Pam. So we can set up an appointment. Because she's going to ask you, what is this pertaining to? But I talk to him. Now, you, you won't talk to him until you find out. Because, see, the, you can't call, you call the doctor's office now. And they, you, you, want, you want to see Dr. Sugar Baby. I'll say, well, what, is, what, you, what do you need to see him about? Because they're going to write down everything. That, so when, when he come in there, he already know, well, what about this and what about that? Okay. And so you, you want, you're going to tell them before you see the doctor. Now, you, want, you don't want to tell them, but this, this is person. What, I don't I didn't see you put that on the web. <laughs> that you got STDs. And, and, and you didn't put that on, but that it, no, no, dude, that's not, it, is that personal or what? So you got to tell us, that, hey, so he, he can get his stuff all ready, ready cause, and, and, you know, we can run some tests because we might, we might have to double the dose on you. They want to know what you're coming there for. So I tell them, say, hey, you tell what you want to talk to me about. Because if she said about this issue, I said, we not already dealt with that, so I don't, we don't need to talk, that no, talk about that no more. And so when she said, well, I talked to Bishop, he said, Y'all already discussed that. Yeah, but I got some more. He said, y'all finished with that. And that's a done deal. Come on, talk to me. I got too much at stake. I got too much at stake. I love each and every one of you, but I got too much at stake. My reputation around here is spotless. They're going to tell you, say, he's going to tell you the truth. He's going to tell you the truth. But you, he, right now with another woman, oh, no. I got sister brother. I, I ain't worried about nothing there. I'm good to go. Until God called me home. I, when I said the death do it for, no, God, that, that's going to be it. It ain't going to be the time I want to trade in and get me a younger. This, this old car, you, there ain't nothing wrong with it. So they trade in a car that's in immaculate condition. Why you trade this in? This car probably run better than the one you're trying to buy. Because you know what this one is about. Come on, talk to me. You might be buying a whole new pack of problems. So, but I know what this one is about. It, 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 I had about like 10 years, and it got 50,000 miles on. I know what this one is about. You say, hey, it ain't been drove off. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. So just folk, you know, we, we buy cars now, high mileage. 
been drove a while. They're like, come on, come on, talk to me. So somebody want a high mileage man, they want a high mileage woman. Got all of these miles. They, 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 they've been had more times than, than KFC, churches, and Popeyes got chicken. Everybody seen more breasts and thighs? Come on, talk to me. All your stuff about all over town. In other towns too. You've been spreading it around. But when you come to Jesus Christ, he brings about profound change. Now, now, now let, me, let me deal with it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, listen. Don't think because I went out and I messed up, I had a child or two out of wedlock. And, and God will save you. God will forgive you for that. Now watch this here. Mary Magdalene, she was a woman caught in the very act of adultery. You're not going to make me believe that was the first time. They just got caught. And so now they bring her before Jesus and say, according to Moses' law, it, 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 she should be stoned because we caught her in the very act of adultery. So God can, can forgive you of that. You can go back to the point of just when God sanctify your body, he put it just like as you had never sinned. He, he makes you all over again. He blesses you. Come on and talk to you. Now, watch this here. When, when you got a man that been out there drinking all this time. Man, his body all messed up. It's all tore up. A woman that been out there drinking and got all, you, you know, alcohol drying out the skin and everything. Else. They're doing all this stuff to you. But when God start beautifying you, when God start washing you, God start getting that junk out of your system. Come on and talk to me. When God start getting that junk out of your system, my God, God will bless your skin color. My God, God start blessing you. My, they they, they want to know, what, what are you doing? My God, I'm just, yeah, what, what are you using? I see your skin saying, yeah, I'm just living right. I'm not putting all of this toxic mess in my body. I'm not drinking alcohol. That's destroying me. I'm not sucking on cigarettes and drugs and doing all of this stuff. That's destroying me. But I have presented my body unto God as a living sacrifice. See, See, you old, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody worried about you. When, when that had the age had anything to do with it. I listened to her the other night. I think I was on my way to the house. And they had, I think, a June Hunt show come on. A woman come on there, and she was just crying and hysterical. And she, she was saying that she was married to this man 50 years. And he came home one day and told he wanted a divorce. But she, she was, you know, they've been divorced maybe about three years or better, but she's still suffering behind that. She's still messing up. You, you know, ain't no whole lot of fire in that chimney. I mean in that fireplace. <laughs> ain't much going on there. He might hear the rest stop every now and then. He ain't like he's going to burn up some rubble. You know what I'm saying? Ah, that, that, that ain't going to happen. That's not. He not gonna, ain't no tires going to be squealing and all that kind of stuff. The devil is a lie. He may think, you, think you're, you're a cabin over and you, you standing at the, at the end of the 500. That, that engine just boom, 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 boom. Man, that, that, that thing is just falling dead and everything else, man. You just can't keep trying to restart it. You pat it a little bit, get a little acceleration. Take your feet out the accelerator. Die. That being said, the devil the tell said, you ready to go now? You all revved up. Oh, man. Well, come on, talk back to me up in here. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. You, you know, 
See, God can rejuvenate the body. He can bless it. If you don't believe it, you ask Abraham. You, you ask Sarah. He can rejuvenate the body. But he's not rejuvenating you in sin. You running around after the blue pill, the white pill, the, 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 the purple pill, or the, the yellow pill, or whatever kind of pill can, can get the engine started. That'll stay started. Something is messed up there. This is why God said, hey, you rejoice with the wives of your youth. So, so when, when this thing is saying start playing out, hey, we're doing it together. We're doing it together. Come on, talk to me. God want to bless your life. God want to save you. Because there is a spirit of deception in the land. And the devil is, is, is deceiving folk, thinking that you're all right because you go to church. But you, you're not living a life that's going to bring glory to God. And so th this is not, you know, my experience with holiness. I gave my life to God at 22 years old. I gave my life to God at 22 years old. We were married when I at the age I, I was 22 years old. I gave my life to God at the age of 22. I figured, I said, listen, I know me. I said, if this marriage is to work, I got to give my life to God. And I loved her enough to do the right thing. We didn't go around there playing house and all of this foolishness. And you know what? I, I'm so glad I did. I could have messed up and made the wrong choice. But I made the right choice. Come on and talk to me. I'm not worried about how much junk they got in the trunk. I'm not worried about how big the legs are. I'm not worried about that. But you're looking for a woman with integrity. You're looking for a woman or a man that's going to respect you. Somebody that's going to enhance you. That's going to make you better. The purpose of us coming together is what's lacking in my life. Now, she supplies. And what's lacking in her life, now, God, I supply. Now, God, we're meeting the needs of both of us. That's what marriage is about. Marriage is not you going hanging out with the boys unless you, you know, you're on, you're on the down low. You're going both ways. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel like a man. Sometimes you don't. You messed up, man. And you, you people out there, this is the thing with, with, with the, our world today. And God, people don't know what they get. And for the life of me, I'm, I'm, I'm about finished. I can't see why that woman that with, I think it was a New Jersey senator or whatever he was, Congress, I don't know, I don't remember which one, whatever it was, he was up in Washington. Now he decided he don't want to be married no more. He, he, he won't want the little A's. <laughs> and she's standing up there. They must, she had to be doped up. Because what I be look up there, it looked like at a press conference with this pervert. He done, he done rejected me for a man. And she is standing up there like, like, like she talked to which she was. I believe she was. Now, if she'd have been going upside his head, then I'd have Way to go. And I'd show and say, you go, girl. She was calling him like a leopard. I said, you go, girl. Then <laughs> they'd been saying, she shouldn't have act like that. What else do you want to act? She's she the woman. She's been hurt. And let me, let me tell you this here. In this day and time, they, you know, when Sister Brenda and I got married in 1977, they required a blood test. See, they don't require it now. But you, you make sure that now we're going to get a blood test. They said, they said, I don't care what they said. This is for you, your best interest and for mine. So I want to make sure that everything is on the up and up. And I want, I want a thorough blood test. I want to make sure you didn't, you didn't accidentally miss something. I want to make sure that ain't nothing here to sleep, nothing lying dormant. I'll every day you wake it up because I want to make sure that, 
hey, everything is on the up and up. Come on, talk to me. Don't worry about that devil out there, how he look. He, oh, man, he, he, he look good, got a gold teeth, but he, he still got some plunk in it. I never married that rascal, then next thing you know, he, he dying out with, with some other man. He ain't coming home no more. He fell out of love with you. He wasn't in love with you anyway. Don't play the world's game. You come to the house of God so, hey, so you can get the knowledge that you need. So, hey, I don't want to go out there and live in a life that I'll regret for the rest of my life. Come on, talk to me. But this is where you, you, you're at the right place today. To come so you can learn about what God's word said. God want to bless your life. He want to turn your life around. He wants you to become a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Come on and talk to me. But I'm going to say this before I pray. Women, I want you all to hear me. Man, there's some slick talkers out there. They can get sweet out of salt. But salt and bitter, yeah, but they got, man, they got some smoke, folks out there with smooth words. Man, they, they can get sugar out of salt. And so it wasn't on even that. Just, but yeah, but I got it out, man. And you find yourself giving in to this foolishness. Because he tell you, 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 you the only woman on earth for him. But guess how many others, silly women's even told that. And then the next thing, he didn't got the milk from the cow. Then you don't hear nothing else from him. On ringing all off the hook. And, and he won't even ask. You didn't text him. You, you didn't left voicemails. And, and you're not getting any response. He wasn't. You the one was silly. No, he didn't say silly. Well, I'm saying what the Bible says. Silly women. Laden with sin. Because you caught up in you. You think you all that. That's why you dress like you dress. That's why you look like you look. Because you, you stuck on you. With your nasty sin. You, you ain't all that. That women around there make you look like yesterday garbage. And, and then you, you around there, you think you all that. Every day you, you look on a magazine because you got a... a you know, you think that woman was beautiful? Man, some of them folks that, that were beautiful women when I when I was growing up, they, they, you don't hear nothing about them now. But they got other folks taking their place. They're coming out, they're looking better than they ever look. Come on, talk to me. And, and so it's always somebody look better than you. And you don't want nobody to, to, to want you for, for your body. Because that's going to change. That's going to change. And, and a woman that takes pride in her body, that, don't you know that's a full-time job trying to keep that, that body in shape? You, oh, you got to work overtime. Your metabolism is not up there like it used to. It, it, it's, it didn't decrease. You don't have that energy to, to, to go like you used to. Now. So, so you have to work hard. You have to work overtime trying, trying to keep your body like you want it. And so now, but if you have a baby to it's it, it going to alter that figure. But that don't mean you have to be wired in that foolish figure. And I don't care if y'all don't ever like it. I think it's laziness and trifliness because you're looking at women, that, you know, the, the actors and, and thing, actresses and things having four and five babies and they still got that, that big H.A. They, they all in here, this baby fat. You lying on the baby. Ain't no baby in there now. So if it's baby fat, the baby ought to have the fat. I don't care if you had a 9-pound or 10-pound or 12-pound baby or 13-pound. You know <laughs> and then, you know, most times you say that they were just all baby. But some of them, they, man, they up there bigger than that, that, that chair and, and, and have a baby 5 pounds, 6 pounds. We know that wasn't no baby fat. Because after the baby come, you still wide as that chair. But when you take pride in yourself. Now, let me tell you something, husband. 
Don't sell for them sitting up there being sorry and lazy and, and getting wider and wider. No, uh, say, baby, listen, you need to do something. You need to get that run.